Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 10 as well as James chapter 5 verse 3. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Father God for your word. Thank you for strength. Thank you for helping us to get through another day Lord. Bless your people Jesus. Help them and help us to understand your word. Help us to not only understand it, but apply it in our daily lives. In Jesus' name, we pray. We love your word, Lord. It is our treasure. Amen. All right. Let's get started. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 10. For they disciplined us for a short time as it seemed fit to them, but he disciplines us for our good that we may share in his, share his holiness. All right, so it says, for they discipline us. So they're talking about um, earthly fathers um, here. And so he's saying that um, the earthly father disciplines his child um, for a short time as it seems best to to them right because he's trying to discipline his child to make his child better he's trying to um instill wisdom in your child but you can only do it as much as as you know as a parent right so it says for they discipline us for a short time as it seemed best to them but he disciplines us for our good that we may share his holiness and so he in the beginning of that um chap not chapter but um in the beginning of the paragraph he talks about um the legitimacy right if, if you're not disciplining a child then is that child truly legitimate right because you want um an heir to be a disciplined heir you don't want just an heir that's running around doing whatever and never learning from the lessons that they're receiving right you want them to receive discipline you want them to discipline themselves and the best way that an earthly father would do that would be to discipline his child while they're young right so that's why it says for a short time as it seemed best to them so and and they can only go by the wisdom that they have right the things that they know and so it says but he disciplines us for our good that we may share in his holiness so he he he's doing everything remember all things work together for the good of them that love the lord and are called according to his purpose so if we love God, you know, we we have to know that no matter how God is disciplining us, it is for our good, right? He's trying to bring something out of us. He's trying to bring the best out of us, right? He's not actually trying to be like a harsh father to where you become resentful and you become bitter, right? No, just because you feel the discipline, you feel the toughness, you feel um, some kind of way, you have to know that your God is still a gentle God. He's a loving God. He still understands you when you speak to him. You need to let your heart be known to him, right? As as he disciplines you and as he gets you and makes you perfect, speak to him, right? When you're having conflicts in your life and you're going through a disciplined season, Speak to him. Let him know the feelings that you're going through. Let him know where you're struggling. Let him know. Speak to God about it. God wants you to bring these things to him and not just bottle them up and keep them inside. That is not um, allowing him to help you process. That is not allowing the Holy Spirit in to uncover everything. Holy Spirit knows when you're holding back. The Holy Spirit knows when you haven't, you haven't addressed issues that are you're in, in, right? The Holy Spirit knows if you're becoming resentful or bitter and, and the Holy Spirit tries to lead you in ways to be honest with yourself about it. The Holy Spirit tries to lead you so that you can, you can be healed of that so that you can be delivered of those things, right? But we still have to be honest and we still have to 
know that he is disciplining us for our good that we may share in its holiness right um he he wants us to have the righteousness which is um from christ jesus but holiness and set apartness is something that can take time right over time as you spend time with the lord you you're you're you don't look like the world right you you become set apart you become different you become Become not like the world anymore. And so it says that we may share his holiness. We can walk in these special holy places with God because we are holy. He wants us to be like him, be holy as I am holy, right? So in order to go there with him, you need to begin to walk out this, this discipline, right? It's for our good. It, it, it is for us us to advance in his kingdom. So just as an earthly father would discipline his child, the best way he knows how to for the short period of time that he's his charge, the same way, even more so, the father is going to discipline us for our good. And he's going to do it in a way that is truly tailored for our personality, for our good, right? And it says that we may share share his holiness all right and so this is conflated today with james chapter 5 verse 3 your gold and silver have corroded and their corrosion will be evident against you and will eat your flesh like fire you have laid up treasure in the last days and so this is also talking about discipline right this is talking about discipline and wisdom and that's why they're conflated today because the world system teaches us that we should lay up treasure right it's a part of our discipline in the world that we should have much silver and much gold so that you know when the time comes we can retire we can put these things away and we can be able to have a life of luxury we can be rich we can we can be like you know the best of the world the lifestyles of the rich and famous right your gold and your silver have corroded that's what he's telling Israel so this discipline that they come into is not of God. This is a discipline of the world. The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. So they have they have gotten into this love of money. They have gotten into this worldly discipline. And it says, your gold and silver have corroded. So this thing that they've invested themselves in has fallen apart right? It has revealed itself, right? Have you ever gotten something that was so beautiful when you first bought it um, and it shone, right? It was so shiny and so pretty, but over time, you know, it, it begins to fade and tarnish and, and corrode, right? And you realize it wasn't as pretty as you thought it was, right? It says your gold and silver have corroded and their corrosion will be evidence against you and will eat your flesh like fire. So why does it say that it will eat your flesh like fire? You know, when you buy something like a fake ring or a fake piece of jewelry, what is it going to do? It's going to corrode. It's going to turn your arm green. Your arm's going to start itching and swelling. It's going to eat your flesh like fire, right? So that's what it's talking about. But this eat your flesh like fire, it's also talking about a spiritual judgment, right? This It's going to tell on you. If you discipline yourself in the ways of the world, eventually it's going to tell on you. It's going to, to be corroded when it comes to you know be put in the fire it when it comes to to um be 
held up as one of the things that you lived by, one of the things you discipline yourself by in the world, that's not going to last, right? It's going to tell on you that this is not real. This was not done for Christ. This is not, this is not goodness, right? And so, in the same way that, you know, um, it talks about the Bema seat and how um, the, the precious metals and the precious stones will be put through the fire and what's done for Christ will last, you know, that in that same way, this silver and gold, which is corroded, it, it is, it's not put in through a Bema seat fire, but it is, it is held up to trial, right, at the judgment because because now this is worldly treasure. This is these are things that are not fruitful to God, but fruitful to man. And and because of that, it is corroded. It is going to fade. It is not going to last because it is not of Christ. And so it says, "You have laid up treasure in the last days." And so that I thought about that, and the first thing that came to my mind with "You have laid up treasure in the last days." is, you know, in the 1920s, the banks failed, right? And so when the banks failed, I'm quite sure that there were many people who had put all their money into the bank just recently, you know, before it failed. There were, I'm sure there were lots of people who, okay, I'm going to, to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to put my money in the bank, right? So this is the equivalent of putting your money money in the bank just before the bank fails, right? This is the last days that we living in. So now is the time to invest in eternal things, right? We don't need to wait till the last minute and, and then say, oh, well, I think I might start trying to do something for God. No, no, this is the last days. You are to be running strong. You are to be investing well in the things of God. God, right? Disciplining yourself in the things of God and not in the things of this world, right? Worldly treasures will not last. If you invest your treasure and lay up treasure and hide treasure in the last days, it's going to tell on you. Why? Because it is going to become corroded. We are supposed to be selling our things and giving to the poor, right? We're supposed to be not going out and going on shopping sprees right and, and you know we all get caught up we want something here we want something there I don't think that's God's point God's point is that it is the last days prioritize our priority should be laying up treasure in heaven and not on this earth right so it says you have laid up treasure in the last days we need to be disciplining ourselves in the ways of the father, not our earthly father, which our earthly father had a way of doing it for himself, but our heavenly father's ways, right? Our heavenly father's ways are disciplining us so that we can partake in his holiness, so that we can share in his holiness, so that we can be disciples for him, right? Disciplining ourselves so that we can walk in his holiness, not in, in, in short-term luxuries that will not last and that will corrode and fade, right? We all have things that we want to do or are willing to do and, and are looking forward to doing, but we have to remember the time right? You have to remember the time. Always be watchful of the time. Discipline yourself in eternal gain, not in worldly wealth. Amen. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this completion of scriptures, Lord God. Help us to keep the main thing, the main thing. Help us to keep the priority, the priority, Lord God. Help us to run for you and not look back. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right.
All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross, and I believe you rose again to you and give you his children his peace. Take care.